Jenna, but you guys can call me Jenna. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my cabin and another weekend reading vlog. Hi, hello. It is a long weekend, which is why I'm up at the cabin. Long weekends are the best to spend at the cabin. I apologize for all the noise. <laughs> Talk through what I have up here to read this weekend. I brought up Hunger of the Gods because I didn't quite finish it for leaving, which is fine. I'm gonna finish it tonight. Um, I also brought up my library books, Redemptor and Beasts of Prey. And I also brought library book, The Blade itself and my copy of The Final Strife. Oh, and because <laughs> I just kept bringing books. Uh, when Women Were Dragons because, you know, that's fun. And I also brought all my annotation stuff. So that'll be good and lovely. But we're gonna go out and talk where it's not so damn noisy. We got fans going everywhere. Cause it's warm in the cabin. It's warm. But in here, we've got an air conditioner. We've got an air con now, which is also low key loud. Which, you know, not fun, but it's the weekend. I'm gonna be hoping to read all sorts of stuff, you know, continuing reading. As you can tell, it's a little bit humid. Hair's a little fluffy today, I don't know what's going on. But yeah, just got back from a cart ride and I'm going to settle where there's a little bit more light because in this corner, which is where I was, very little light, can't actually read very well. I'm going to be continuing The Hunger of the Gods. I have very little left. I think I have like two and a half hours left on the audiobook at the speed that I'm listening to it at. So everything's good. Everything is golden. But yeah, this is our sunroom, by the way. It is huge. Here's the door. She big. She big. She's probably the length of my condo or more. <laughs> but yeah, mom and dad just went on another cart ride. <laughs> so, um, oh, that's also why my hair looks ridiculous. It was just at a cart ride. But mom and dad just went on another one. So that's why I'm able to talk to you. But we're gonna see how much reading I can get done. I also brought my computer. Cause I do want to work on Project Dragon as well. It's a long weekend, so I'll catch up with you a little later. Hello, happy Saturday. I finished Hunger of the Gods last night and I screamed. Last book of my Friends Week Wedding TBR video is completed. We love to see it, but oh, that was so good. It was so good. Oh my God. And then last night I read about 25 pages of The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. I don't know what I'm gonna get up to today. I should probably read one of my other books as well or finish the final strife because that one that one I need to make a, a dent on so maybe that uh, but right now I think I'm gonna do some writing I'm kind of in the mood for some writing so that's what I'm gonna do
friends, it is now much later in the day. I do apologize for the sound of the air in here. It is very loud, but this is the coolest place in the entire cabin because the rest of the cabin is like 27 degrees. It is too hot inside. So I'm sitting out here with Bella. <laughs> um, we've just had dinner and we've been chilling. I think me making dinner made the place hotter, but that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Um, I watched a little bit of Critical Role and I also started reading Beasts of Prey earlier and I'm about 120 pages in roughly. Ooh, about 127. Page 127. So that's fun and I'm enjoying this. It took a long time to get to like the inciting incident. And I was like, oh, when's it gonna kick in? <laughs> like it was a lot of just laying the groundwork, which I think I've come to understand that like as a storyteller myself, in something say like a middle grade, that inciting incident happens within the first two chapters usually, maybe the three, maybe first three if the chapters are really short. Adult fantasy, that shit could happen in the first 200 pages, right? Depending on how long the book is, depending on where we're at, and if it's a Brandon Sanderson, it might happen page 300 you don't know but usually with adult fantasy you can't really pinpoint what that like inciting incident is it's like usually shit's just hitting the fan <laughs> which is good you don't want it to be super formulaic of course i mean you, you do want it to you want to hit those beats but like you know what i mean it's not like super important to be super clear what your inciting incident is you want to just hook your reader and keep them hooked and engaged the whole time so it doesn't really matter when that like choice is which also i think in like longer slower fantasy people will describe things as slow that's usually where i find like the inciting incident isn't really strong like it's strong but it's slower and it takes a little while to get things all laid out and to get comfy in the world and all that kind of stuff so i think like those are like the two spectrums that i'm working with in my brain and then there's ya and ya is very special because i find and i have found that first person YA and traditional YA that is under 400 pages especially YA fans usually has the first like the inciting incident with within the first 100 pages that's usually the benchmark I've just hit the like not the inciting incident I've just hit the moments after the inciting incident where like one of the characters makes a choice that's on page 126 so I think even though it felt long it was in that benchmark, which is very interesting to me. Sometimes I find like, reading YA fantasy, I like that inciting incident doesn't happen for a little while, but there's like a lot of stuff leading up to it. And then I kind of sit and I wonder, and I'm like, huh, huh, writing is an interesting uh, formula, isn't it? And then it makes me wonder, was that even the inciting incident that I'm picking up on? Because in this, the inciting incident happened around page 80, but then, we kind of meandered for the next 20 pages, 20, 30 pages, before we've actually gotten to this moment of one of our characters making a choice. Our other character still has not made a choice, but something has been, has now happened again to her. So like, this is taking a little bit longer than a usual fantasy book to like kick into gear. A YA fantasy, I should clarify, because like adult fantasies meander like crazy, which I'm used to, but I think that is just because this is over 400 pages, which is surprising for a debut. Yeah, it's almost 500 pages. Like this is a long book. Intriguing that the publishing industry let this go, let, let this almost 500 page novel go. Interesting, but I'm very intrigued by it. And this is not first person. So I'm starting to think that I don't like reading first person books because I just finished Truth Witch, of course, from my other video. And that's also third person. And I loved it. And I write in third person for my high fantasy, but I also write in, middle, in, in first person for middle grade. So I think I like first person for middle grade, but I love third person for like everything else. And I never thought I would be that person who would be like, oh, I prefer one point of view over the other or one narration style over the other. But here I am. <laughs> Maybe it's just because a lot of YA has a lot of like narration of first person that I just don't like because like then we're in the heads of like super angsty teenagers and I'm just like, I don't want to be in your head right now. I would rather be omniscient over you right now, <laughs> not actually in your brain. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know, but interesting, interesting thoughts with me at the cabin. <laughs> Mom and dad are currently 
out at a friend's place for dinner. I have no idea when they're gonna come home, but Bella and I are just hanging out. I think I'm going to read some more of The Final Strife because I need to get this back into gear and like get through it. My other video for my recent releases part two. Anyways, I just thought I'd pop in and say hey and have a little chat. I'm still obsessing over Hunger of the Gods. I am so in love with it, but I think tonight I'm gonna see if I can carve through like a good chunk of The Final Strife. I'm just gonna put the audiobook in and just like go and see how far I can get because it's a beefy, it's a beefy boy. And I'm not like super loving it. I've also put it down for weeks so to get like through other books. So I don't know if it's gonna really do it for me. And if it doesn't, that's fine. I might switch back over to Beasts of Prey or if I wanna continue another audiobook, I've got the Joe Abercrombie. So this is why I read so many books at once because I can just cycle through what I'm in the mood for. We'll talk to you a little later. Hey, A.W. <laughs> cabin. Mom and dad just went out for a quick little ish stroll with Bella. Very fun. But I wanted to pop in and say hey. Today has been a very low-key day. Last night we had the thunderstorm of all thunderstorms and so Bella, being the anxious little nut that she is, was up shaking and panicking all night. <laughs> and I took her up onto my bed and I, I know like from previous experience that it helps when there's something else on with noise to like balance out the sound of the storm. So, you know, we had all of the fans going in here because it was like death out in here. It was like 27 degrees, way too hot. And so we had all the fans going, it was very loud. And then we had, and then I put on Critical Role as I was finishing The Final Stripe. So I finished that as well. But I put on Critical Role for her and then I think I was up until like 1.32 with her trying to calm her down. And then I was just like, you know what, <laughs> I'm tired. And she finally kind of relaxed. And then I put her on the floor because I didn't, she's got back problems. We can't have her on beds. Cause if she jumps down, she could really hurt herself. But yeah, I did finally finish The Final Stripe. I was up real late and then had an absolutely abysmal sleep because it was too hot and it's just, yeah, I don't sleep well when I'm not in my own bed, so <laughs> bad sleep. So I was up at like 11.30 today. Not my plan, but it was my, I don't know, it was what was executed. But yeah, last night finished the final strife, so finally, thank God, <laughs> I finished this and I did end up liking it. it. It did like turn around for me, but I will talk more about that in my recent releases video when that goes up, hopefully later in August. I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm hoping that I can have it up for you guys in August. I just need to finish Kaikei now and it should be up and ready to go. But today, what have I done today? I've edited some of my friends pick my TBR and then I decided to do some writing. So I did a little bit of writing and I wrote like, about a thousand words today. And then I did some planning because as I was reading Hunger of the Gods by John Gwynn, I got inspired to add another character point of view, add another character, whole thing. <laughs> I'm excited about it because he's gonna offer a point of view to the quote unquote bad side, but it's gonna be an interesting thing to play with as this quote unquote char bad character. He's gonna have a really interesting storyline and that I spent the rest of today figuring out. And since then, it's now about six almost. I, since about 4.30, I have been reading Beasts of Prey and I'm now on page 295 and I'm zooming through this. This is okay, entertaining. I'm not like super attached to the characters or anything, but it's entertaining and that's all I really want. So I'm gonna see if I can try it, finish this and then I'm gonna spend the rest of my evening reading Joe Abercrombie's The Bleed Itself because I want to really set, like sit with this audiobook for a while. So that's gonna be the thing, but I do want to finish Beasts of Prey before I dive back into this. But yeah, that's been my day so far. Not too crazy. It's finally sunny out again, which is nice. It's been like gloomy all day, 
gloomy and cool, which we love after yesterday's just disgusting weather. It was so hot. Yes, my friends, that's kind of what's going on. Tomorrow's Monday. It's a day off, long weekend. Tomorrow, when I get home, I'm going to go grocery shopping, I think, pick up a few things for the week, and upload this vlog and do some reading and, and all that kind of stuff and just relax before my actual week starts because this week coming up, I have bigger, more content-filled week at work, so I'm gonna be doing a lot of work uh, this week and I'm already tired <laughs> thinking about it, but that's okay. I got lots of articles to write and, and magazines to pull together in August. August is gonna be a lot, but that's okay. We're gonna do it, it's gonna be fine. <laughs> Anyways, I thought I'd pop in and say hey, so. I will probably catch up with you guys tomorrow when I'm back home. Hello friends, happy Monday. I am back home, I've gone grocery shopping. I even got a new laptop case in the mail. I'm debating whether I wanna put stickers on it, but it is also like a matte case, which I wasn't expecting. I was expecting glossy. I don't think it said in the actual Amazon ad whether it was glossy or not, but like the other case that I had for my computer was glossy, and that's the one with all my stickers on it. So I don't know whether I'm going to transfer the stickers onto here or whether I'm gonna just sticker them onto my like planner or something and use them there, but I don't want to waste all those beautiful stickers <laughs> that I had on my computer. So, but I do like the look of it without any stickers on it. It's pretty sexy, but anyways, yes, I'm home. <laughs> Hi, hello, I'm home. This weekend was incredible for reading, my guys. Incredible for reading because we had a three and a half, a four star, and a four and a half star. I've just been spending <laughs> a little bit of time putting everything through Copa. Oh, I also got, with my laptop case mail, I got these two boys, which are two, I believe, self-published books. I got uh, Miss Percy's Pocket Guide, to the Care and Feeding of British Dragons by Quinby Olson, which is a recommendation that I picked up from Katie, from Brightness Katie Reads, one of her recent videos talking about like cozy fantasy. I picked it up from there. And I also finally picked up this indie book that I've been meaning to pick up forever, and that is The Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Wang. I believe this is a standalone fantasy story. I'm ready, and I've heard such good things about it. But yeah, got those two in the mail, <laughs> along with my laptop case, which is very exciting. But yes, this weekend started off the weekend strong by finishing The Hunger of the Gods. This is the four and a half star. I loved this book. It's just didn't give me the feeling of a new favorite kind of a thing. Like it's, it's up there with like absolutely some of my favorite books, but it's not like a favorite favorite, but it is the closest to. And then I ended up finishing finally my read of The Final Strife, which is the three and a half star. You'll get all my thoughts about this in my recent releases vlog that'll be going up hopefully sometime later this August. Yeah, it was good. It was finally like came together in the last half of the book, I think. This is about a world where people are divided by their blood color. So people who bleed red are the like top cast. People who bleed blue are the medium cast. And then people who bleed colorless are like the bottom servant class called ghostings. And they are maimed and so they have no tongue to be able to speak and they, their hands are cut off. So we are following our main character who is a, she's living in a duster, which is the mid-cast uh, world, but she bleeds red because she ha was stolen as a kid, <laughs> stolen as an infant, has the blood of the empire, but she's, you know, has the heart of everyone who's been oppressed kind of a thing. And she's been part of this group and that was supposed to bring about the like end of the empire and like usurp everything through this trial that happens every so often. The Akhtabar held every 10 years to find the next ember rulers of the empire. So they're embers. And so she kind of gets wrapped up in this plot to instead of her joining the Akhtabar, which was their original plan because she's really, really really good at fighting. She ends up becoming the maidservant to the Ember ruler's daughter, who is this like soft, sweet, naive girl who is actually one of the duster kids that were replaced with the Ember kids when they were stolen a long time ago. She bleeds blue, so she can't technically, you know, <laughs> do things and she's been trying to hide the color of her blood her entire life. So it's it's them kind of like, and instead of Zara entering the Akhtabar 
Anur does, which is the girl, and Anur ends up asking and getting Zara to... Zara? No. Why am I... Why do I keep saying Zara? It's not Zara, it's Sila. What? I don't even know where the name Zara has come from, but... <laughs> okay. Sila, our main character, ends up being tasked by Anur to, like, as her maidservant, it, like, that's her disguise, trains Anur to be better and she enters the act bar and she wants to win. It's this whole thing of like, Sila wants stuff from Anur. She wants to be able to learn how to do the magic that the embers are, that do through their blood work. It's like blood magic, which is kind of cool. Sila from page one has an extremely crippling drug addiction to this Joba seed that allows her to do incredible things when she's fighting but she is so addicted that she at one point thinks back and she's like, yeah, I think I took like 20 in a day at one point, which like everyone around her who is aware of this addiction is like, you shouldn't be alive right now. This is bad. So we have that going in. So we have all that, you know, to deal with. But yeah, I think by the end it, it got interesting. It is also a sapphic romance, sort of, which is fun. And there's a little bit of like, our main character I think is bisexual because she's, you know, into a guy in here and also a newer, which is very fun. That's the final strife. Uh, you'll have more thoughts about that in that video when I compile it together. And then finally, yesterday, I finished Beasts of Prey by Anna Gray. And I didn't like super love this at the beginning, but by the end, this is like a four star, a low four star, probably three and a half star book as well. But by the end, it like really caught me. <laughs> it really did. I was really into it. I enjoyed the dynamic between Kofi and our sweet boy in this. What the hell is his name? Econ. Kofi and Econ. I enjoyed their dynamic, but I just wish there had been a little bit more of them getting to know each other in the forest rather than just like fighting all the time because they don't know each other they know next to nothing about each other and yet it's one of those like typical YA things where you're like oh there's tension it's like oh he's so close to me oh my god and I don't hate it he smells good I'm like you know nothing about this man absolutely nothing at all it's one of those relationships in YA fantasy that I'm just like I don't really buy as much because there again is not that like connection with the knowledge of each other you know like sure they're going on this like quest into the forest to, uh, that's basically what this is. They're each for different reasons going in, in on a quest into this forest to defeat this like ancient creature that has been terrorizing their town. Different reasons for both of them. It's a shortish kind of trip, but it feels kind of like the Son of the Storm by Suyi Davies Okungboa, but in a way of like, this did it a little better because I didn't really like Son of the Storm very much, but this did it a little better. Although I will say like, again, I don't really buy their connection that much because there wasn't enough time and like space for them to get to know each other because a lot of the time where they're in the forest together, they're either A, fighting, B, one of them is like unconscious and dying or C, one of them has betrayed the other. Like it's a weird dynamic of like, they don't actually know each other, which is interesting. Anyways. That is me rambling. And then last night I got to page like 120 something of the blade itself, 137, I lied, 137 of Joe Abercrombie's The Blade Itself, which I am enjoying. I'm not like super hooked on the story yet. Who knows? That has been my weekend of reading. It's been a good weekend of reading, a very good weekend of reading. And now that I'm home, I'm going to, well, it is Monday, so I'm gonna, you know, edit up everything and get everything live for you guys. But thank you so much for hanging out with me this long weekend. It has been a pleasure and I will catch you in another video very soon. Stay kind and keep on reading.